hello and welcome to my new tutorial which will be all about able ability system that you can get from marketplace link and uh, more information on the uh, system itself you will find in the description of this video let's jump in first of all we started with creating a new project and copying AGR uh, assets from our other uh, tutorial which is called the advanced blueprint tutorials if you haven't followed my other tutorials there is a link in the description and there will be also another one at the end of the video I highly recommend uh, using those uh, components that I created because they will make our life a lot easier just a big disclaimer we'll be using uh, this third person um, example map we have a new character prepared we have no abilities whatsoever and let's look at the setup that we have right now so this is the base uh, input setup that you have in a third person character uh, and for this tutorial purposes um, I just create a begin play event and then on a sequence I am setting up animation master component which is driving our animation uh, system swapping poses and uh, aim offset setup so this is it I also uh, added my uh, sound master component which is adding automatic rotation for uh, footsteps and we are using uh, AGR uh, controller uh, in the default mode we also want to enable debug on all components I also added combat master component but we will not be using combat uh, made by the component but instead we'll be using ability system also added able abilities uh, simple as adding a new component to the actor itself and there is nothing more that I've done so far so let's look what this ability component can do here are some of the base functions first of all all abilities are running on gameplay tags which means that you can run multiple functions that are gameplay tag related you can check if ability component itself includes any tag includes all tags or excludes any tags from the uh, tags that you are already looking into those inputs are tag containers so they are single uh, value variables that can hold multiple tags at once you can also check if it has one very specific tag if it matches all tags in a single container or matches any tag from a container they include uh, executing uh, abilities means that this is also checking abilities that are not passive but uh, currently checking for execution if you run this uh, function uh, because you can run it inside ability itself on the context of the ability you can also add and remove tag by function but there is also a special task for the abilities to add and remove tags on the component you can also get directly the gameplay tag container and you can do whatever you want with it directly from here we can for example create an interface function that would always return our abilities tags to any actor that requires them from us one of the most important uh, functions that we uh, have here is the create ability context create ability context is creating the ability uh, in a state that is ready to run for our activate ability function there is another activate ability that you can run directly from the component um, and it overrides the ability component in the ability context so you can take an ability uh, with uh, uh, a different context and run with this function and you will still run it on this particular component that you are pushing forward uh, the ability itself is an object and it's a derivative from object class and it is instanced by default uh, for each uh, player and uh, for the server and everyone has its own version of the uh, component the component uh, the, I mean the object the object is read only 
So it can be modified by any way and there are certain functions that are checking uh, for potential cheating that are being run on the server and modification of this uh, object on client will not result in cheating on uh, server side authentication. This ability can be created by get ability object from class. Here you can just specify class of an ability. As instigator, this is an actor object reference. However, instigator in any other um, actor or any other component in Unreal Engine is usually a pawn, which means that if this is a component uh, on our character class, we should refer to self. As for, for owner, this is also an actor object reference. It depends on you. You can refer to the pawn itself or you can refer to the owner of the pawn if this ability component is, for example, part of a weapon or um, any actor that is not pawn related. Or you can just get a controller of this pawn and push it as owner. This is how I usually set up abilities uh, with owner being the controller and instigator being, being the um, character. However, you can do it uh, differently. You can make it so that the character of our player is the owner and instigator would be uh, whatever is triggering the ability. So for example, a weapon. For simplification, we'll use uh, only character as reference for both. You can always access the context of the ability directly from the ability. Context is the only editable part of the ability, the only part that can change on execution. And you can then run um, interface calls, functions, get component by class, and refer to different uh, variables directly uh, from the context values like owner, instigator, component or ability. From this you can activate the ability and on activation of ability you will get a return that uh, has multiple uh, options like success, forwarded server, uh, async processing and some other. There are also um, error messages so if for some reason your abilities are not executed, you can always try to debug here. You can also from a context create a scratchpad. A scratchpad is an object uh, that uh, can store values for the ability. Scratchpad can store custom values that are specified for this particular scratchpad uh, class and they can be accessed directly through the ability. So a scratchpad, for example, could hold the value of damage that a energy shield can absorb. And uh, this uh, absorption damage can be updated at runtime, even though the ability itself cannot be edited, scratchpad can be. Of course, server has authority over scratchpad and scratchpad values are being replicated down to clients. From the ability context, you can get uh, also current time ratio, uh, you can get target actors, clear target actors, stack, uh, set stack count, however, this is uh, authority sensitive, and some other functions that I haven't mentioned here. One of the uh, functions that we will be using the most is create ability context and activate ability. If you set up the ability correctly, you don't have to do anything about the ability or the ability component outside of it. And all the logic can be driven inside the ability itself. You can also cancel ability by context and by, um, oh, even by uh, object directly. So if you have, if you, for example, want to have logic that on uh, click, you start an ability and on release you cancel it. You can do it directly in the ability itself and make it channeled ability with an input condition, but you might have different conditions that you don't want to specify there and you can make cancel ability directly from Blueprint. You can also set passive stack count 
which also is uh, server sensitive uh, so you don't have to accessibility to change uh, stack count of an ability of course abilities that are stackable you can just uh, activate ability multiple time to set certain stacks but if the stack count that you are looking for is in for example hundreds it's better to just activate the ability once and then set the stack count uh, by hand directly in blueprints on server authority uh, set draw collision queries is a general function that doesn't require reference to any ability component because it affects all ability components uh, in world and it will draw collision queries the return value is whatever you have set you can also uh, get draw collision queries without setting it you can also uh, on authority remove cooldown or set cooldown on ability from the component itself, you can also get current passive abilities, which is an array of all uh, references to ability objects. And on those ability objects, you can, as usual, do any function uh, in regard of gameplay ability, uh, I mean, gameplay tags. You can get stack of this uh, ability. You can get cooldown total. Uh, base cooldown value from which you can calculate how much uh, actual time we have left and you can check if the ability is on cooldown and can be activated again uh, this is getting just the current passive abilities because you can have only single active ability the only difference between between active abilities and passive abilities is that active abilities are exclusive you can get only one of them at once if you try to run another active ability while having already one active ability running it will fail execution which is uh, very nice because it uh, allows you to easier control abilities that should exclude each other without checking for tags and without making any special uh, additional concurrency checks just making them active abilities you can also uh, cancel an ability on other ability or you can branch from one to another the ability component itself doesn't include any event dispatcher so we don't get a direct notification on certain events whatever on ability uh, begin added stack or end you need to make an ability template and you need to make sure that you notify your character or any owner of the ability component by hand yourself last one thing i forgot to mention is that you can get active ability as well and like i said there's only one of those at a time so it should be here that's it when it comes down to the component let's uh, start working and set up our first ability <laughs> 